Richie Havens had been making music for more than 50 years, and a few years ago he passed away. Now, I didn't know Richie Havens, but Richie Havens was a friend of mine. This all started way back in 1967. It was a summer of love, and what a miraculous time it was. I was walking around Greenwich Village with my friend Janet, smoking some medicinal herb, of course. <laughs> We saw this store on 8th Street. We went inside. There were Dagolo posters on the walls, kites hanging from the ceilings. The smell of incense was in the air. And as I looked around this large room, I saw a familiar face on one side. I said, Janice, that's Richie Havens. She said, no way, where? I said, over there. And as I looked across this large room, I saw this big, beautiful smile beaming back at me. And Richie was shaking his head as if to say, yes, it's me. I think that was the first and the last time I was ever embarrassed running into somebody famous. Now, a year or two later, I was at a Richie Havens concert. I was standing at the foot of the stage with the other potheads. <laughs> and I noticed this strange dude next to me. He was a tall, hippie dude. He was big. He had long, dark hair, headband, fringe vest. I turned around, I looked at the stage, Richie came out, picked up his guitar, and he started strumming. Well, as he started strumming, the hippie dude started rocking in some weird way. And as Richie picked up speed, picked up energy, the hippie dude started picking up speed and energy. His arms started moving, flailing. I think he was trying to dance. <laughs> but it was the kind of dancing I had seen at Grateful Dead concerts, <laughs> where the dancer, was completely oblivious, even injurious, of those around him. So we gave him a lot of room. <laughs> now, as I'm watching Richie on the stage, he starts picking up speed, and without skipping a beat, he walks across the stage, down a few steps, and he walks right up to this hippie dude. Now, Richie's strumming like crazy, this hippie dude is dancing like crazy, and these two started feeding off of each other. These two big guys, they were really jamming. I couldn't believe it. One minute I thought this guy was Geek of the Week, and the next minute he's the star of the show. I had never seen anything like that before or since. Now fast forward 10, 20 years. I'm working in Manhattan, working for AT&T on the 72nd floor of the World Trade Center. I step outside in my lunch hour in my three-piece suit, I go down Park Road to check out this new computer store. And as I'm walking around, I heard this announcement. Appearing in 15 minutes in our music store down the block, Richie Havens. Well, I figured, been there, done that. But they were so insistent, they were relentless. They said appearing in 10 minutes, appearing in five minutes, appearing right now in our music store, right down the street, Richie Havens. I figured enough already. And I went to see Richie Havens. <laughs> As I stepped inside, he broke into my favorite song of his, Just Like a Woman, and it was perfect. He did a few more songs, and then he started signing autographs. People were buying his CD and getting it signed, and when I looked at this, I thought, well, that's pretty pathetic. <laughs> How uncool is that? How lame. But as the line went down, I realized Richie was going to leave, so I ran over, I bought a CD, and I got on the end of the line. A few minutes later, it was just me and Richie Havens, two dudes reminiscing about Woodstock. Not bad for rush hour in Manhattan. Now, when I went home later that night, I showed my son what Richie had written. He wrote, to Andrew, a friend forever, love Richie Havens. Wow. Now, a few simple words, but it meant a lot. It said a lot. Now, fast forward another 10, 20 years. I'm with my family in the Hamptons. I take my wife and son to see Richie Havens. Now, to tell you the truth, the music wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. My son, in particular, was underwhelmed. Well, he's a millennial. 
At the end of the concert, Richie steps up to the edge of the stage all by himself, no guitar, no band, and he starts singing. It was just him and that magnificent voice. But as he's singing, I started feeling apprehensive, uncomfortable. I felt helpless. And then I realized what was going on. He was putting so much of himself into that song, I thought he was hurting himself. He was putting so much of his heart and soul into that song, I expected him to collapse. I felt helpless, I didn't know what to do. I turned to my wife and I looked at Carol. She had tears in her eyes. And then I realized that everything was as it should be. Richie was doing everything he needed to do, everything he wanted to do to reach out and touch his audience as only he could. That taught me a lot that day. That's the way he connected with his audience. And that brings me to what we do here today. Because each one of us comes up here all alone without a net and we reach out to our audience. We try to connect. We share a part of ourselves, our vulnerability. And on a good day, on a good day, we reach out and we bond separately and connectively. We become one, we become whole. And that's what I learned from my friend, Richie Havens, that day. That's the way you connect with your audience. And so I salute and I'm inspired by my friend, Richie Havens. I may not have really known Richie Havens, but he was a friend of mine, a rare friend, a special friend, my friend, Richie Havens, a friend forever, a friend forever.